at my life I'm a lot like you were Oh man, look at my life 24 and there's so much more Live alone in a paradise That makes me think of two Love lost such a cost Give me things that won't get lost Like a coin that won't get tossed Rolling home to you Hey, how you doing? Justin here. I'm going to leave it there because the chorus is too high and it sounds really awful when I sing it and I don't want to slaughter this tune because it's a cracker. We are, of course, looking at Old Man by Neil Young of probably his biggest record, which is Harvest. Fantastic tune. Lots of really interesting things going on. Really fun one to play. Uh, we're going to break it down into three sections. So we're going to have the kind of the intro thing with this little kind of hammer on -y bit. The verses, where there's lots of little kind of uh, intricate kind of improvisy bits where we can lift off different fingers and kind of add in these cool little variations. And the chorus, which is kind of just some interesting strumming. Now, uh, before we get started, I want to explain a couple of things that are going to make it a bit easier. Uh, the pulse of the song is kind of a 16th note-y kind of rhythm, but I'm going to explain it as 8th notes, which is meaning that I'm thinking 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is kind of a funny count, but it makes it loads easier to explain the rhythm to you because there's some quite kind of complex things going on rhythmically, and if I do it as 16th notes, it gets really complicated for me and really complicated for you. So that's the first thing to be aware of. Second thing to be aware of, really important for a lot of Neil Young songs, and, and definitely this one, is that the strumming hand is really consistent. He's always going to be strumming a down strum on the beat and an up strum on the end, right? So that's a real, it's, it's a, kind of a big deal. And once you kind of get a feeling for the tune, if you go back and watch the little intro thing, you'll see this hand doesn't stop moving. No matter what the runs are or what rhythms are happening, this hand's consistent, right? So that's a really big deal. Now, on to the intro, and the first thing that's really important with this to get the right kind of vibe is this little mute thing that's going on, right? So we're using the outside part of the hand there to rest on the strings quite near the bridge. If you, if I just put the little, uh, the first chord, if you start with a regular D chord and move it all of the way up to the fifth fret and then lift off your second finger, that's the chord that we're starting off with. It's kind of like a D minor seven. Well, D minor 9, I guess, will be its proper technical name, but uh, we can just think of it like a D chord kind of slid up and it makes it like a D minor if we lift off the second finger there. So uh, with that chord shape down, what we've got to realize is that this palm thing is kind of sitting on the string sometimes, but not all the time. If we just left it on all the time, it just sounds kind of wrong, right? So it's kind of bouncing. Consistent strumming pattern, picking out individual notes, which we're going to go through in a sec, and with this bouncing kind of mute. There's a lot going on. Now, if I tried to explain to you exactly which of the notes are muted and which ones aren't, it would be so difficult for you to learn it and so difficult for me to explain it that it would suck all of the fun and the music out of this tune. So you're going to have to listen to it a bit. I'm going to explain the concepts. I'm going to tell you what notes to pick and how it's picked and all that stuff. But to really get the right kind of feeling, you're going to have to do a bunch of listening to the original recording, which you should be doing anyway, actually, to tell the truth. So uh, let's get to a close-up now, and I'll talk a little bit about the fretting hand and where it's going and where the little lifts are and stuff, and then we'll go and talk a bit more about the strumming. So the chord we're starting off here with is a little kind of a D minor 9. Easiest way to think of it is just starting off with a regular D chord, sliding it up to the fifth fret and taking off your second finger. We're only really playing the thinnest four strings. If you hit the fifth string, it's not going to be too bad, but you definitely don't want to be hitting the thicker string. So the big deal here, if I just play the little riff first. You can see that not a whole lot's going on here. We've just got this little hammer on with the first finger and then a little flick off later on when we're on the D chord. So let's talk about that first of all, where that's going to hammer on. So we've got one, two, and. 
So we're going to strum first, then two, and we're going to hammer on that first finger. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and. And in the next bar, it's going to be on beat one. One, and two, and three, and four, and. And then again, one, and two, and three, and four, and. We just play that first three bars again. One, two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one and two and three and four so you can see on the d one two and three and four one and two and three and so it's again just a little bit of twiddling here with a little D sus two and a D sus four. Just that D chord again. One, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. Just putting that second finger, hammering it on, on beat two. One, two, and three, and four. And now here, one, and little finger going down in the third fret of the thinner string. One and two and three and just lifting off the second finger and plucking those thinnest two strings. We're going to look at the picking in a second, don't worry. One more time. One, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four, one and two and three and four. And that's it. It's not particularly difficult for this hand. And the trick is just, again, making sure that you count it real slow. And remember, the hammer-on's coming on beat two in the first bar and beat one on the second bar and the third bar of this little D minor ninth. Let's have a look at the strumming hand. Hopefully you can see this hand's just moving consistently. It's easy, right? Well, it kind of is easy and it's kind of not. Because what you're going to need to be doing here is figuring out what strings are hit on what motion. So if I do it real slow... moving consistent, but it's also consistently hitting the same strings, which is where it gets a little tricky. So, the first bar, one, two, and three, and four, and. So we're hitting the, mainly hitting the D string, but we might end up sneaking and hitting that one a little bit. You want to have that first finger down for that. One, two, and. So this time we're hitting the middle two strings. We've got the hammer on, then we've got Mainly the second and third strings on beat three. The and, four, and. So this time that little, the, the bass note on beat four is playing just the D string. And the little upstroke is playing the second and third strings. One, two, and three, and four, and again. One, two, and three, and four, and. And I'm showing you this kind of exactly. It's a little ridiculous. You should just kind of feel it out a little bit. But it is kind of tricky. So, uh, okay, let's continue. The second bar. One and two and. So, one. Those middle two strings with the hammer on. Beat two. Strings two and three. The and is the up strum hitting the thinnest two strings. And then beat three. The down strum on the beat. And then and four and is strumming the middle, uh, sorry, the thinnest three strings. That second bar, one and two and three and four and. Again, one and 
two and three and four and. Okay, the third bar. One and is the hammer on. Two and three and four and. So middle two strings, hammer, then two and that's the middle two strings then the second and third strings with an upstroke down strum on the beat three up on the end after three bass note again on beat four and an upstroke just on the second and third strings on the end after four so that third bar one and two and three and four and first three bars now one two and getting it exactly exactly but this is the idea here will be to try and start off with it quite exact and then try and loosen it up so in the real world that was of course without the mute there but just so you can hear the notes and just see the smoothness of that hand you know so the last couple of bars there where it goes down to a D chord Hammer, down, down, down. Fourth string, thinner string, hammer, down, up on the third string, down on playing the middle two strings. Then down strum with the little finger down, which will flick off. Then those two on beat two. One and two and three and. One and two and three and it's important that so two and it's just hitting the one string three and second fingers come off for that okay, let's have a look at that whole section one more time and then we're going to move on one two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three and four and one two and three and four one and two and three and four. After the moving D shape intro, we go into a little bit of strumming before the verse starts. And the chords are D, F, C, G, D, F, C, F. That again was D, F, what kind of F major 7? C, G, D, F, C, F. But what gets really interesting is these little variations which happen all of the way through the verse as well. So we're going to look at them now. So the D, you've got a couple of little things uh, that you might want to experiment with, little ornaments you could call them. First one is lifting the first finger off and hammering it back on. Yeah, a little hammer on there. You can also got one with the second finger. Just flicking it off or hammering it on. And you've got also a little finger going down, which is a D sus4. Some of you might know that already. So that one can hammer on or flick off. Lots of variations you can do with that. With Neil mainly in this song is that one and that kind of little hammer on with a little finger sometimes. Now the first time he plays it, or he, he, the first time I play the F, I tend to play it this way. Neil nearly always tends to play F chord like that. Okay, with the thinner string muted, third fret, third fret, second fret, first fret, and the first string sometimes ringing out like that, like an F major seven, but quite often just muted as well with the underneath of the first finger. So if you want to do it that, like the proper Neil way, I'd say D, F, and here's the big variation there with the F is with the second finger, just doing a little hammer on with the second finger. 
also gets flicked off as well. You can get away with that, sounds pretty cool. Now this is a real Neil lick for this. So it's C, middle two strings, hammering on the second finger, playing the second and third strings, second finger hammers down again, but this time it's going down on the second fret of the third string. The actual riff, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and. So the G chord, nearly always with Neil's played this way with the third, fourth fingers, third finger muting the fifth string there, nearly always nearly always when he's playing this kind of chords because it's just easier to get to than kind of jump into that big chord. So real common for this. So D, F, C, G. The note with the G I'm playing the bass note and then strumming the chord. That bit again. D, F, C. While you're doing all of those variations, this hand is still very consistent, again, with most of the Neil stuff. So you just really got this kind of rhythm going on, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and that kind of, it's just consistent. Mostly, I guess, da 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 ba da da. But sometimes there's da ka da ka, like on the C. It's kind of hammer ons, but the pick's in there as well, you know? It's a real mixture of kind of half hammered on, sometimes picked, you know. So just to it, it was, it, you got to experiment with that stuff, man. So let's look now at the verse chord sequence. So it's kind of. Uh, a 16 bar sequence here, we got D, F, C, G, D, F, C, F, D, F, C, G, D, C, F, G run up at the end. So basically D, F, C, G. D, F, C, F. D, F, C, G. D, C, F, G. So it's just the end part where we've got the D, C, F, G, which is kind of different, and then G, A, B, C, D, which is the first chord of the chorus. And again, make sure that you're picking that down, up, down, up, down, just because again, you're keeping that picking motion there all consistent all the time. Let me play the verse one more time through. You can put as many variations in as you like. There's a few on the recording, but of course, if you're singing, you're not probably thinking about that so much, so you just gotta let the ones happen that happen kind of naturally. So, once more through that verse, so. Oh man, look at my life. 24 and there's so much more. Live alone in a paradise that makes me think of two. Love lies such a cost. Give me things that won't get lost 
like a coin that won't get tossed rolling home to you. Okay, and now we're into the chorus. So what's going on for the chorus is a D chord with a couple of those variations. So we've got the old first finger lift with the hammer on and the little sus4 with the little finger going down there in the third fret. Now on the recording it's A minor 7 and then I swear I can hear the little finger going down here, which will make it kind of an A7 sus, but it's just really a variation of the A minor 7. Little finger going down there on the third fret of the second string. Haven't noticed him doing it live, but I could definitely hear it on the recording. So I'm going to show it to you anyway. So, and then if you've done that, little finger, you just need to move your first finger over to the second fret of the fifth string to have an E minor 7. And then we've got a G. Now you can use that G. Sometimes I use that G because it's easy to get to the D chord. Uh, I've seen Neil use a couple of different ones, so it's really up to you which one of those you uh, want to try and use. So D. A minor seven, E minor. One, two, three, and four. too difficult going on there. I'll just do it one more time nice and slow. And let's have a look at that strumming hand. Imagine many of you will find this probably the hardest part of the tune to get it exactly right. You don't have to be playing it exactly the same way as him, but it is quite distinctive. There's a few cool things to learn. So this first bar, or first two bars with the D chord, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, four. So down, 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 hammer with the first finger. So on beat three, you've lifted off your first finger. Three, and is the hammer on. And then we've got an and, which will be an up strum. One, two, three, and four, and. Then one and two, that down strum. So down, up, down will be the sus four. Down again on beat three. One, two, three and four and one and two three that again one two three and four and one and two three four now we've got a little bit of fun one two and three four a minor on strum one two and, so the and is the up, but make sure you get one, two, and, that the hand's going to move again down on beat two, but it's not going to play, and then the up strum on the end. One, two, and three. Beat three, it's a little stop, dead stop there with the outside palm hitting in the strings. One, two, and three, four. And then got the down strum there on the E minor. One, two, and three, four. Worth practicing that. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And
and the second bar, we're holding it over beat one, and we're going to have and two, three, and four. So the and two still on the E minor, and two, G, and four. So from the A minor, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four. Again, that A minor section, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four. Let's do that whole chorus sequence again, because it just repeats around that. If you get it slowly, it's not too difficult to play it through at the right tempo. Three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four, one, two, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. I'm sure you're going to enjoy playing this tune. I think it's a real cracker. Loads of interesting things to learn. I'm uh, hoping a lot of you guys will do covers of the song and upload it as a video response to this video as well. Uh, the tricky thing with this kind of tune for me is always how much detail to go in, you know, counting through the rhythms and really going into detail about what strings should be picked. Sometimes it can be a bit more confusing. And if that's you, if you're a bit like, oh, God, what was he talking about? All these ands and uts and ups and downs. You know, if that's you, the best way to learn these kind of tunes really is by ear, is listening to the original recording a whole bunch of times. So if you're confused now, listen to the original recording, start with the skeleton kind of outline of what I've given you. So what the chords are and that continuous arm movement thing that's so important, and then see if you can kind of just feel your way through the tune. That's how I just learned it and how, you know, most guys learning this kind of music, especially back in the, you know, in the 70s and 60s when this music for the 70s and 80s, when this music was really big, you know, that's, that's how people learned it, you know, it, it wasn't just, you know, it wasn't the internet around then. So that's kind of, if you like, the authentic way to do it would be by listening and experimenting. So, um, you know, don't feel too bummed out if you're a bit confused by all of that, uh, my explaining, you know, I've, I've, I've explained it as best as I possibly can and with as much detail as I could, hoping that for some of you that'll really help. But if it's, if it's just bummed you out, then, you know, go back to the traditional approach of just listening and uh, playing it a lot. Um, I'll see you for lots more Neil Young lessons coming up. Uh, take care of yourselves. See you soon. Bye-bye.